everyone, I'm Claire Curry. I'm a science librarian at the University of Oklahoma. Today, in video 17 of Options for Remote STEM Research, we're going to discuss what data licenses are. Most resources focus on picking a license, but because we're talking about using existing datasets, today we're going to assume you already have an existing dataset that you're looking at, so you're using something that already has a license. First, what is the purpose of a license? Licenses are permissions to use items that are under copyright. This resource, the OU Impact Challenge, has a really great chapter on understanding open licenses. The Impact Challenge says that copyright is the intellectual property law that protects creative works from theft and misuse. In effect, the authors are keeping all the rights. The chapter further goes on to say that licenses allow creators to grant standing permissions to anyone who seeks to use their work. This means you already have some permission to use the work. There is no need to search out the creator in order to use it. To read more from this chapter, please go to the link on this slide. Now that we know what licensing is, there are a few broad classes of licenses that are typically applied to data. These can be Creative Commons licenses, which you may have seen on other works, open data licenses, or software licenses. You can read about the specifics of these licenses at the links in the upcoming slides. So see what license your dataset has and find it on one of these pages. Creative Commons is a well-known set of licenses that was not designed for data that can be used for it. There are specifically open data licenses. And finally, there are software licenses. We will not use those for data, but I include them here for completeness so you're aware of them. Why are there so many licenses? Well, different types of work have different needs. For example, data and databases sometimes use different licenses relative to a creative work, such as a manuscript, because a database could contain items from many contributors. So, to understand why the creator might have used different licenses, check out the top three links on our guide to datasets on the link on this screen. If you encounter a different license, you can search for the license name, and you can also contact your liaison librarian, or you can contact Jen Waller, our Director of Open Initiatives and Scholarly Communications, and she can help as well. Today, we covered where to find explanations of the most common licenses applied to data, in videos 18 and 19, we'll talk about how to properly credit a dataset you're interested in using. Video 18 will cover attribution, and video 19 will cover citation. These two categories overlap, but it's good to know the variations. On July 10th, we'll have a live Twitter Q&A for licensing and citing datasets. It'll be from 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. Central Daylight Time. It will be on Twitter, so no registration is required to participate. You can read more about it on libraries.ou.edu slash events for the July 10th event. Finally, more videos in this series, as well as announcements about our live events and workshops, are available on Twitter and on the Data Analytics Visualization and Informatics Syndicate listserv. You can view past videos in this series at bit.ly slash OUSTEMYT. Please contact me if you have any questions or comments. Thanks for joining us, and stay safe out there.